rising, everyone. How is my child? Good and coffee. Mm -hmm. Ah, so yum. Okay, let's get started. Emerald Tablet, Alchemy for Personal Transformation. We've been going on quite a bit longer, but try to keep it pretty short and sweet if we can, or if I can. <laughs> I don't start just battling on. <laughs> Isn't that what these are for? So we could babble on. <laughs> good morning on Facebook. Um, if you're on Facebook, say good morning. I don't know who's on here. It's not showing me who's on here. <sighs> drives me nuts. You have to actually say hi in order for me to see. Um, okay, so let's get started. And yesterday we were talking about as the above and the below. So really going into correspondence and the doctrine of correspondence. What does correspondence mean? Um, and has it play a role in alchemy? And so as above, so below. As within, so without, right? Um, hi. Okay, hi. I would love to review incredible uh, copy. And I'm afraid, I don't know what that is. Roasted coffee. I would love a review on the incredible. Oh, it's a coffee you have. Oh, I would love to. So you do you have coffee? Why don't you message me? That'd be great. I'd love to try your coffee. Somebody endorsed me. That'd be great. <laughs> Sponsored me. That'd be great. Wanted to do private label coffee, actually. Spirit and coffee, right? In the morning, we drink our coffee, and then we talk about spiritual stuff. Pretty cool, right? I'm not a coffee company, but I wouldn't mind. So, yes, I would love to try it. Your sister gave it to you a while back. Hmm. Did she? I don't remember. <laughs> well, I'm glad she did. But I'm happy to give you another pack. Yeah, give me another pack. I don't recall. Oh, man, I'm sorry if she gave it to me and I messed up on that one. Uh, Miss T, yes, my sister. Yay, okay, cool. Yes, that's my, my sister. Yes, give me some. Uh, maybe we can meet up or something, and um, and we can meet, and I would love to try your coffee. It'd be amazing. Um, okay, so let's get started, um, <laughs> and thank you for that. Um, so we're talking about the doctrine of correspondence. The concept of higher levels determining a reality is part of the doctrine of correspondence expressed in this rubric. That doctrine postulates that correspond corresponding planes of creation exist any given situation and mirror a higher source of explanation for things. The powers of the above and the below continue to manifest themselves in ways we cannot comprehend until we access the levels from which they emanate. Um, this is really critical. We cannot understand, we don't understand the consequences of every decision that we make. Um, we can never understand that, right? So when we let's say put a pebble into a the water right let's say the water is still and we put it and it ripples out we don't really understand the impact of those ripples that's the same with correspondence now however there are certain things that we can do where we get certain results we understand that there are some results or some uh, consequence or result or however you want to say it that comes back now some people think consequence is a negative connotation so they won't use the word consequence um, and they typically uh, don't like it, but there is, there is a cause and effect, right? For everything that happens and everything that we do. So we'd say correspondence is that. It's looking at what are the effects of what we do and us not truly understanding the entire thing. However, if we understand where it emanates from, where does it come from? Then we can start to steer our dialogue and storyline with intentionality, okay? And intention being, really important in the process of spiritual alchemy what is the intention if you follow the intention kind of like if you follow the money right people say follow the money you'll know what happened same thing with intention follow the intention and you'll know why people are trying to be in your life what is it what are they really there for right if you know their intentions now you can better decide how to move forward what is the the, the true intention behind what they're trying to do so understanding intention is critical. And those are things that we can ask if we wanted to put it in practical terms in our daily life, right? And we wanted to make it a practice, we would simply ask, what is your intention? 
what's the intention behind this? Somebody, you know, again, wants to meet me or somebody uh, says, hey, we need, what's the intention? Tell me what it is that you're wanting first before. That way you can understand how to engage or even if you want to engage, you may not even want to engage based on the intention. So understanding where it emanates from. Now, this is, that's at the microcosm. So we're ta- what I'm talking about is really, 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 really um, at the microcosm the day-to-day interactions with individuals, but there's something greater happening, right? As we can see from these agendas that are happening and perhaps being forced upon or inflicted upon individuals that don't want to do certain things, that there is this underlying feeling that somebody else's agenda is being forced upon. Where is that emanating from? How is that coming from? How did they create the alchemy that put people in a bind that they they don't want to be a part of? See? But it took years and years and years of development, right? Hundreds of years, thousands of years. The oppression and all that stuff that we see happening. So it's a culmination of uh, millions, thousands of years actually uh now surfacing right and the consciousness saying what the hell is this well where did it emanate from and we can talk about it from different levels right we can talk about it from the microcosm and the day-to-day interactions with individuals all the way up to perhaps the archetypal pieces where we understand energy and exchange for energy and how that energy pattern plays out within the cosmos the universe all the way to perhaps the beginning of time. So again, this this concept of correspondence is super important to understand. Okay, and we talked about it again. So the high so the concept of higher levels determining our reality is part of the doctrine of correspondence expressed in the rubric. Okay, higher levels of determining our reality. That doctrine postulates that corresponding planes of creation exist in any given situation and mirror a higher source of explanation of for things. So if we look at it, um, there's a, the way to describe this from a macrocosm, because right now, you know, thinking about our day-to-day activities where we do these exchange, right, exchange uh, of, of individuals, where we look at intentionality from what is their purpose, what is their intention, why are they, what are they connecting with you for? What is that about? To the bigger understanding of the cause and effect of the universe. Being, and the best way, and if you haven't seen it, because I think they try to sort of describe what we call the above and the below, or the doctrine of correspondence and alchemy in the movie Eternals. I just saw it. And they talk about how they they seed these stellar bodies, celestial bodies, that there's these celestial bodies that are birthed into creation to create universes. Now, this particular way of describing it is not something new, right? Universes creating celestials, creating celestials, birthing new things, birthing new celestials. And how does that happen? How do we Uh, seed new ideas or new ways or understand how things are created. And that's kind of a a, a way to describe it visually that we could maybe understand it because our level of consciousness is too small. Our scope of perception is too narrow. Our scope of perception is too small. We, we, we have to expand our scope of consciousness in order to understand these things. It's right now, it's just, it's a tiny, hey, Baram, it's a tiny little dot, right? Our scope of, of consciousness. And we have to expand it, but we can never expand it to the full glory of what is happening. We only have a narrow perspective of it. We're looking at it through a lens that's very, very small. But we try to describe it and we try to understand it. Like, how do we understand the bigger picture? How do we rise above? You've got to rise above the storyline of the day-to-day activities, but you can also see the pattern with our day-to-day activities. 
So it is there. So the best thing for you to do if you're working with individuals and you're moving along is understand what their intention is. Ask them. You can ask them. Right? And if the intention is ill-willed and they get uncomfortable, they're not going to tell you or they won't know how to answer that question. And then you can know how to move forward. It's not that they're right, wrong, good, or bad. You just want to know, right? So that you can know, so that you have the information you need to move forward with the relationship or that connection. The same thing is true for the way that the perhaps the universe was created or developed or born out of, however you want to see it. Hey, G-Man. GP man. <laughs> so the, the, the thing of correspondence is really um, cool. So in any given situation and mere a higher source of explanation for things, the powers of the above and the below continue to manifest themselves in ways we cannot comprehend until we access the levels from which they emanate. Now, the, the levels from which they emanate is kind of, this is not an easy thing, right? Because people will say, well, oh, I'm more enlightened or, oh, we're just on a different level. What does that even mean? What level are you talking about? Do you even know what levels exist? What levels exist and who created the levels? This is an egoic conversation. We have to transcend that first, okay? So if we looked at the egoic conversation of levels, if we looked at it from that lens or that perspective, the ego itself wants to create levels to feel significant and important and like it matters, right? And we do this. It's, it's vanity. It's called vanity. We're all subject to it, especially those who are in public spaces or, you know, doing stuff like this, right? I've had to challenge my ego against the, um, you know, going live and doing these things, right? So you come up against it and you say, okay, well, what's this level? Well, this level is your ego. And the ego is asking you, why, what, what is it that you're doing it for? The ego doesn't want to die. The ego wants to be right. And it's being able to transcend that so that you can see from a bigger scope of consciousness. So you're expanding the consciousness to sort of get a, a, a view, a bigger picture. But the ego is so small, right? The ego is tiny. You know, it's big to us, but it's really a small scope of perception. It only holds so much energy. And it's important. We need the ego. But we've got to expand, and that's expansion. It allows us to have a broader scope of perception. We start to grow our perception in order to understand more, perhaps, or I wouldn't say to understand more, but to be able to relate and have interconnected relationships a lot better with not just individual people, but with everything around us. In other words, we cultivate those relationships with the things that we cannot explain, even the dark stuff. It's like befriending it, right? Understanding that it exists because it exists. And it's not something that's going to just be getting, we're not just going to get rid of it, right? It's here. We just acknowledge that it's here. But where did it emanate from? What level did all of this emanate from? And so we have to be able to let go of being right, the need to be right and look good, which is not an easy subject for most people too. See, some people, <laughs> and this is a hard one. We want to be right. I see people all the time, right, on Facebook, and they do these Facebook wars with, with individuals, and they put whole passages, and they want to just prove their point and be right about their point and make it everybody believe their point. And you can't, you're going to, I mean, you can do that, but how much time are you going to waste on that? And what really is it? What's the intention? Where are you going with it? What is, what outcome are you seeking to be right? 
you know, if you let go of it and you allow your consciousness to expand, you might actually then start to be able to listen and hear what the other individual's saying and perhaps something, maybe even a slight little bit of what they say has some truth for you and it expands your consciousness. But we don't do that, right? We have to be right about shit. That's ego. We have to transcend those storylines. We have to transcend the fact that we are, um, you know, the only one who's enlightened and nobody else is, you know, those things are, we know, I know, oh, I know, I know it all come to me who knows it all. Please get, get over yourself. Get, <laughs> hey, Lou Roth, <laughs> get over yourself. That's what I'll tell people. Just get over it. Okay. You don't, first of all, just be real. And number two, we can't expand our scope if we think we know all everything because we don't know shit. I know that I don't know shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so these levels that they're talking about sort of exist in different planes, or I would say densities or dimensions is what we talk about. People say, well, I've gone to this other dimension. Well, what does that mean? What dimension? Is it a dimension that I can walk through with you? Or is it a dimension that exists only within your scope of view? Like what dimension are we talking about here, right? So they're like, oh, come to the fifth dimension. Okay, where is it? How, wh what, where, what level's that? How do I get there? What are you talking about, right? So these levels that I'll tell you is one, first of all, is our ego. It's, it's the day-to-day -day activities and it's being able to overcome these dialogues so that we can have a, we're sort of a viewing our ego. We're able to be the uh, observer of our ego. And that's another level. We're, so one, we're living in the ego, right? Where we're, we're, we're actually operating it. Then there's able to reflect and have awareness of the ego where we're being the observer of the ego. And then there's another level where we become the context, meaning the ego, the observer, and everything starts to unfold from you and without you. And then what, that, what does that mean? That means it's all one. Everything is joined and in unison and it's just an unfolding of life in front of your eyes. It, do, it doesn't even have to... Uh, there's you don't even need to make up words, right? It just sort of just unfolds and we're able to view it that way. The observer sort of has this ability to look at things as they are without judgment, right? It's taking out the judgment. It's not allowing the ego to be there. Now, we see this in mindfulness meditation. That's a big one that directs us in this kind of way. There's tons of ways to do it. Kundalini, there's there's different ways to sort of come outside of the ego to observe it and look at it and view it for what it is. We have this ego. Now, how is it operational? Because what is creating that ego? Are you creating that ego or is that ego creating you? I mean, how are you participatory with that ego? And so emanating from what where is the ego emanating from well we would say the collective unconscious that's a way that we could describe it is being judgmental wrong no it's not it's not right wrong good or bad um judgment we need to have judgment in order to survive okay if we had poor judgment skills we would have not survived as a species right so if there's a cave and we didn't put judgment that maybe we shouldn't go in the cave because bears typically live there uh, and we got eaten or killed or mangled by them. Well, then we won't survive. So we need these things in the three dimensional time space. There's a reason we have an ego and we can use it as if it's functional, right? Because right now we're living in a, in a dysfunctional um, construct of the ego. <laughs> It's just dysfunctional. Does it make it wrong? It's just not functioning the way it should, perhaps, or could. I shouldn't even say should. It's not functioning the way it could. Ego is a good thing. Judgment's a good thing. Now, however, when is judgment not a good thing? Judgment isn't a good thing when we um, 
sort of sacrifice a part of ourself or become sick and ill for judging. Right? When it becomes the focal point of all that we do. Remember in alchemy, and, I, and I'll say this to everybody. Hey, Linga, alchemy is not about, it's about accepting everything. We don't throw anything out. You see, that's, that's the lie that they fed us. Oh, don't, don't have negative emotions. We're just going to get rid of that. And then people are so busy trying to get rid of their negative emotions and they don't, they, they never can. They're probably getting more depressed because they think something's dysfunctional about them. Well, how can they get rid of them? And I can't, must be something wrong with me. No, there's not. I mean, I literally, I told you guys a story when I went to New York and walked into the building of Scientology, right? I went in there <laughs> and we, the guy was trying to tell us that we get rid of negative emotions. Well, me, my friend and I are part of the great work, right? Spiritual alchemy. So we knew that this was all BS. Sorry for those who might be Scientologists, but that part of it to me is a big lie. First of all, and secondly, their symbol is totally patriarchal because it has just the upward facing pyramid doesn't even have doesn't even honor the sacred feminine. Anyway, I'm not even going to go into symbology, but I walk into the place and I go, yeah. So we talked to the guy and he claims that he's gotten rid of his negative emotions. So we start questioning him because we're life coaches, of course. And guess what? He got pissed off at us and he walked away and I said, well, I thought you got rid of those emotions, you know, and, and he was like, well, and then he's like, I'm going to go get someone else for you. So he totally didn't even try to enroll us into Scientology. He was like, get out of here. Basically, he wanted to probably kick us out of the building. Um, and so I just kind of laughed um, because for this time and this place, we can now here's the, here's the cool thing. Let me get to it. But we can allow ourselves to grow in joy and sort of minimize the effects of the suffering. But we will always have the suffering. We will always be doing the judging. The ego is an important part of the process here in this three-dimensional time space, but everybody wants to make it wrong. I don't have an ego. What do you mean you don't have an ego? You exist. You couldn't exist if you didn't have an ego. An ego is important but it's dysfunctional because they haven't taught us how to work with our egos. Instead, they've told us that egos are bad and we should just be perfect. Well, you are, you're perfectly perfect in this three dimensional time space. Now you might be dysfunctional. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I'm totally dysfunctional. And so I put myself in the dysfunction, okay? Now, how do we get out of the dysfunction? <laughs> When we become functional. How do we become functional? Well, we understand where it all emanates from. So the, the doctrine of correspondence says, if we understand the above and the below, if we understand the intentionality behind what it is, it gives us purpose. It gives us direction. It gives us an understanding of how to move forward. Tell me about ego. <laughs> Nah, let's see. What what is it that you want to know? Uh, you just saying to me, yeah. So, uh, so again, when we start to look at the dysfunction, well, okay. So, how do we cultivate a healthy ego? And and that would be a question you can ask yourself. How do I allow myself to develop a healthy ego? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What is that? How does it operate in the material world? This is again a part of the practical use. This is how we practice the work, the great work. And we sort of adjust based on the way that we're moving through the world because we're getting some result, right? So I just wrote a paper on mindfulness and neuroscience. And part of the paper that I wrote was talking about intention, attention, and how that can expand our consciousness. Intention, right? When we talk about tension, and if we talk about attention, it comes from the etymology of the word and tense, right? To, to stretch. 
And you're going to find that in a lot of these, the work that we do, we talk about stretching. And you guys may have heard the analogy that once you stretch your rubber band, it doesn't go back to the same size. Once we expand our consciousness, it will never go back. And here's why people are afraid of the great work. They're afraid of the great work because once you know, you can't take it back. And once you know, you have a personal responsibility. And some people don't want it. That's why they say ignorance is bliss because they don't want it. Well, oh, so you're just, you're telling me that I, I can have a functional ego. I was just going to blame the fact that, you know, it's the ego or the devil made me do it. Let's just put the blame on somebody else, on something else outside of that. Rather than saying, okay, I have a dysfunction here. How do I sort of work with that and start to mold it into something that makes sense, that could be functional? Now, is it easy? Hell no. What I'm talking about isn't easy. It's going to take a while. So people want results. They want the magic pill, right? Hey, take the blue pill, the red pill. By the way, there's a new Matrix coming. I didn't even know until I went to the movies the other day and saw the video or the trailer. Take the pill. What pill are you taking? And why are you taking the pill? And what is the intended result you want to get from that pill? Right? People think they want the pill and then they take the damn pill and then they're like, I don't want to give it back. Well, you can't. So when you're really committed to this work be very 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 careful about how you take your next steps hi vidyat because how you take your next steps has consequences okay now let's just look at the matrix this is a good example neo says hey red pill blue pill right morpheus says hey yo neo which one you want to do one is i'm telling you i'm only offering you the truth and you can't go back so you Figure it out. And he says, no, I want to know. And then what does he do? He takes the pill. And what does he do? Well, now he's responsible for what comes next. Does he know? No, he doesn't know what he's going to be responsible for. But he knows that he took the pill that said, well, now you're not going back to the old way. You're expanding your consciousness. You're expanding your scope of reference. You're understanding where some of this emanates from. So we can't understand how to work with it until we understand where it emanates from. And that takes us expanding consciousness. And expanding consciousness means we have a personal responsibility for whatever information we're given. Not easy. Now you're responsible. Oh, shit. I don't want to be responsible for that. Give it back. No, I can't give it back. You said you wanted it. So some people won't come on here and some people will exit. We had Bob exit the other day, right? Because he perhaps wasn't ready and that's okay. Sometimes you have to think about it before you make your next steps. I tell people, I gave somebody advice the other day. I never give advice, but this was my advice. Give yourself time to process. You don't have to make rash decisions. Allow yourself to step back Take a breath and process. Give yourself at least 24 hours to process shit before you just start making all these crazy things. And really think about it, right? Even longer if you need to. Because every choice we make has a consequence. It has some kind of a result. So intentionality, and this is why I wrote the paper on mindfulness and intention as a way to expand consciousness and attention, intention and attention is because we expand our vantage point as we pay attention and we live with intention. Why? Because we're able to measure some results, some outcome. It is measurable in the material world. If you're living intentionally. Now, here's the deal. If you live with intention and you go out of your intention, you're now you're living out of integrity. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong. But it get guess what? You get to measure. Well, why? Why did I step out of integrity? Where did I step? Do you see how much process this takes? It's not just an overnight thing. It doesn't just happen overnight. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> what did the oracle say? Every time I meet you, it seems like I have more bad news. 
okay, this may or may not be bad news for you, but it takes time. It doesn't just happen overnight and it's not easy. It's not. I don't care. People can say, oh, it's easy. Just, uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Now practice it. Saying it is easy. Saying I know, I understand, I know. Yeah, but do you really know? You don't really know until you put it into practice and then you're going to see. It's like these theoretical models that they create, right? In theory, it should work this way. <laughs> Scientists, right? And then you try it and then you blow up an entire city. It's like that shit didn't work, right? Oops. Must have got one thing wrong in the equation. <laughs> Baby steps, right? A little at a time. You ain't trying to blow up your life. We're trying to cultivate a healthy ego or try to find the functionality of the ego in the dysfunction because nobody, I'm sure in school, they didn't say, yo, we're going to teach you how to have a healthy ego. I don't know if hey, you all can tell me. Go ahead and put on here. Did somebody ever tell you that in school? Yeah. I don't think people are going to be so running at that and saying that. No, you know what they did? Your ego showed up. Perhaps, well, all of it's ego. But the parts that they didn't like in your ego, right? The parts where you're like throwing tantrums and stuff, which is part of the ego, right? Um, no. What did they do? They put your ass in the corner. <laughs> go, go to the corner. Go throw that ego away. We don't we don't do that here. What? What do you mean you do that here? Why don't we understand why they're doing that? Why are you throwing a tantrum? Oh, maybe it's because I give you everything you want, and perhaps it's because I did it. Maybe I'm the reason for this behavior. Maybe they're mirroring me. Maybe that's just me throwing a tantrum. Maybe I should seek to understand and how to work through those tantrums because what's on the other side of the tantrum you don't let a person go through a tantrum they don't know what's on the other side they keep stopping it from actually manifesting into its full potential well, what is the full potential i don't know i'm misunderstood as ego but is not hey bobby you sort of left the other day <laughs> i was just talking about you not necessarily behind your back, but go back because there was a whole thing on, you know, you put yourself out there and we sort of talked about it and um, hopefully, uh, you know, I, you know, yeah, but I went to work. Ah, got it. You had work. Okay. That makes sense. Work is important. You got to get that money, right? <laughs> we were talking about perhaps the lies right and i don't know how much more you want to dig into what was going on with you we don't have to we can stop and i can just let it be where rest where it may but um if you're still um trying to um sort of understand the psychology behind that <laughs> or how you can overcome um this we talked about walking in integrity right and um you know, the fact that you said you're, that you lied and, and that you think you're a liar tells me that you're lying to yourself. And so we were just talking about that. Like, why do you lie to yourself? For what purpose? Why are you compromising your integrity? Are you afraid people won't like the true you? So you have to hide it. And so those big questions, right? You don't have to answer it. You can if you want to, but you don't have to, are questions that I would leave you with to explore. When we lie to others, it's because we're lying to ourselves. We're trying to hide a part of ourselves that we don't want to express or tell the truth about. And it's painful um, because we're afraid people won't like us and they'll leave. And why? They end up leaving anyway because we're lying to them and they find out about the lie. Uh, Frankie. Oh, hey, Frankie. I didn't know you were on here. We lie to ourselves because we can't face who we truly are. Yeah, and that's hard. It's hard sometimes because we've been told in society that some of the shit that goes through our brains is completely wrong and distorted, right? Here we go with the dysfunction of the ego. <laughs> and perhaps it's not. Maybe it's not right mind, but maybe we don't know how to overcome it. But it's because we're hiding it. We're stuffing it down. And for us to be able to look at it and face it, Okay, that's a hard thing to do, you guys. 
I don't lie to people. I'm not my neighbor. <laughs> do you see? It's a hard thing to do. We compromise ourselves all the time. Now here you can say, well, I don't compromise myself. And I would ask you, are you all doing everything that you wished you could do? Like, do you have the dream job that you want? Do you have the dream? If, if it's not a job, are you doing, are you traveling? Are you, are you able to have dominion over your schedule and your time? Are you living in somebody else's construct of time? Because these bigger questions are what's going to liberate you. Again, not easy. Not easy. Especially when we have so many people and so many storylines, right? And people pulling at us for attention and this and that and the other. So we all lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves about what, what we want to do. If we were truly playing out ourselves the way that we're supposed to, um, society perhaps would reject us, right? <laughs> Be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> And I would go as far to say, which is kind of crazy, is that these individuals who are um, so maybe taken by some really heavy drugs sort of don't give a shit what people think about them. I mean, I see it all the time. There was this, I mean, you should see some of the stuff I see. I'm like, whoa, okay. Okay. This person don't give two shits. He just pooping right in the middle of the road. That's cool. Right on, brother. You don't care. He'd have no shame in the world and he's not lying to himself about who he is and he doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks about him. But in society, we would look at him and say, what the hell's wrong with that dude, right? What, what's going on? Rather than look back and say, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> not something I would do. Why? Because, well, I've been socialized, right? <laughs> So we look at these things in the world and, and if we understand where they're coming from, right, where they're emanating from, again, when we talk about the level of correspondence in alchemy, it is understanding um, what is the above and the below, what is the attentionality, and we can start with the tiny pieces of our life with our relationships that we have with individuals and we can ask them, what is your intention? Okay. What is your intention? I ask that to people. Let me just tell you, first of all, and I'm just going to say it because you know me, I'm too authentic sometimes. Sometimes I'm too much. I overshare. But single, right? Want a relationship? Probably hell no. Because why? Because people are just, I don't even know. Okay. We're just going to put that out there. Now, and besides, I'm not the easiest person. <laughs> I'm like, you want to challenge me? <laughs> that's funny approach a relationship like a challenge are you sure you want this challenge good luck you're gonna run the other way and you might go crazy <laughs> okay so what was my point <laughs> um so in relationship right that when so let's say individuals like let's say somebody approaches me right and they want to get to know me okay quote unquote and they want to like I don't know, court me or date me or whatever they are, take me on date. I don't know. You, you know what? The first thing I've done or I do is what is your intention with me? What exactly is your intention? I need to know this because that way I can choose quickly. Like my time is critical. It's important. Otherwise, I'm going to start charging you and send you a bill because I'm a life coach too. And really, I don't. <laughs> okay. See, do you see how crazy this is? Okay. The, the psyche of Natalie. So here we go. What is your intention? And then they're like, uh, yeah, okay, well, let's just be real. Why don't you be real with me? I'm not going to judge you. Well, your my intention is just to kind of, you know, to sleep with you. Basically, that's their intention, right? End of story. Okay, great. I'm glad that you told me. And I respect that. I respect that you were honest with me. But that is not who I am. So probably don't want to waste your time. So you're probably, there's plenty of other people who, see, I'm able to respond instead of wasting my time and this person's time who's just trying, I can, I can totally take them on a ride. I could be such a 
jerk face, right? I could manipulate the situation, get shit out of them, and be one of those manipulative type women. I could, right? I could, but I'm not like that. I choose not to be. And I could take them for a ride and make them believe that perhaps we're going to sleep together someday and have them buy me shit and do all kinds of stuff. But I'm not, I don't manipulate, right? That would be out of integrity for me to manipulate a person and an individual and not see and care for them as the individual. So tell me right now what it is that you're wanting. What is it that you're intending to do? Are you intending a relationship, a marriage? A, what is it? Tell me. A friendship? What? And then with that information... Right off the bat, I can make a decision. I don't have to pussyfoot around it, right? In other words. But is it easy to get to that kind of a dialogue? Hell no. I just want to invite you to Denny's. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> GP, man, that's hilarious. It, it's funny. But could you imagine having a dialogue with me in that way? Poor people. I'm sure people run the office and they're like, stay away from my wife. She's crazy. And it's okay. But at least we didn't waste each other's time. There was a respect, but why? Because we understood from where the, where was it emanating? Why was this person trying to come into my field? For what purpose? And if there's no purpose, I've had people say, well, there's not a purpose. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know. So what should we do? Let's go play bull. I don't know. Let's go, whatever. Let it evolve from whatever it's going to evolve from. Do you see? So what's the intention? And that's not just important with, I'm just giving you my funny little, uh, you know, scenarios for myself, but in your life, thinking about it, because intention, it, it radiates bigger than just a, a relationship, right? Sometimes there's business partnerships happening or um, there's even work. You know, I literally negotiate with my work. I don't just take things for the way that they are. There's always this questioning, well, what's the intention behind it? Tell me what the intention is, this and that and the other. From where is this intention emanating? Because when we have this piece of information, then we can move forward. And two, what is our intention? Now we can measure the result of that intention. Okay. We have to measure it and we can. So if my intended result is to, um, like for instance, very simple one that you guys can take on is a very simple task. My intention is to make my bed every day. Why? Because I know that if I make my bed, that I'm going to be organized without my throughout my day. If I don't make my bed, my head gets all in this weird chaos and I can't really concentrate. It's kind of weird. So what, what's the in, real intention behind it? The intention is so that I can stay in peace and harmony and balance. That's the essence of what I'm trying to create. And the intention is to make my bed so that I can cultivate that harmony. And I can measure the results based on the outcome. Am I feeling peaceful and harmonious or am I not? Yes, I am. When I do that, I am. So I can measure that. Okay. Why are you talking about relationships? <laughs> uh, it was just, uh, I don't know. If, oh, yeah, you're still on here. Link. I was talking about relation just to give some, some context to the information. Back to intent. And everyone knows at the start. Yeah, that's true. And that's, that's why I said some people will say, well, I don't know. I don't have an intention. Men have primal intent. Lots of men want to get married after they have enjoyed the first bit. <laughs> okay, Linga, thanks for that. <laughs> My intention is never to get married, so there you go. But no, it wasn't a, to go on to a full-on conversation about relationships. It's just a, a, a way to understand the material. This can be transformed into different things, right? But I got to put some little fun on it, right? <laughs> And I just think it's hilarious, actually. It's just, to me, it's funny. Maybe it's not funny, you guys, but in my mind, I'm laughing at myself and, and how 
how crazy it can be and how deep we can go with this. But to understand intentionality, and that's the easiest one for me to be able to explain based on who I am as an individual, right? Um, for you guys might be different. You're, because you're perhaps the ones um, that are, you know, that's basically, that's what's happening in my life. That's why that I use that example, okay? Because that's where I ask people the most, what is your intention? What do you, what do you want? Okay. Most people don't approach me specifically unless they're trying to perhaps do some kind of a mating ritual <laughs> for a lack of better terms. Um, okay. So let's see, Nat, do you ever ask men out or only let men ask you out? Oh, I don't ask men out. I don't, you know, the honest, the, yeah, again, it's not about dating or my whole dating scenario or who I am as a person in terms of dating, but um, I don't care. That's not the first thing on my mind, obviously. You can't tell I'm very left brain, um, a thinker. Um, and so uh, it, I don't, let's just say that I don't put my energy towards that kind of stuff. It's just, I, yeah. So there, we'll just end that there. Um, but when it comes to intentionality, I gave that example because again, that's within my scope. Okay. And so for you as you know, men, right, which is going to be very different is perhaps it's within partnerships or, um, I don't know what it is that you're, you're doing. It could be a woman asks you on a date and you want to know what her intentions are with you. You could do that too, but that was an example. So whatever is going on in your life, if there is a relationship or if there's an individual that is sort of circulating there and you're like, well, what, what is, what's your intention? What, like, if we're going to start a business, what's the intention of the business? You're going to have to know that intention so that you guys can move forward. What is the intention of, um, perhaps even the show? What is the intention behind any part of your life, right? I in, What is the intention? It helps to move forward. Why? Because it expands the consciousness in our scope. And it gives us an opportunity to measure results. We are able to measure results. So I'll tell you this, the course that I'm coming out with goes into all of this. It goes even deeper though. It goes to the next level of understanding the deeper meaning behind the intention. And then you have sort of this outline of your life. And I do this every year. I'm not in a relationship no longer and I have been divorced. Yes, and you said because you lied. So I would say, why are you lying to yourself? What is it that you need to get honest with yourself about, Bobby? If you wanna be in relationship, you know what I say? This try to give yourself time to process. People don't know how to be by themselves. It's a hard one. So it's a really hard one. You know, they're, they're they're seeking relationship with others. We need them. They're healthy, and we can have multiple different types of relationships with people. It doesn't have to be romantic relationships. We need that. We're social creatures, but we tend to not have relationships with our own self. And then that I would say is cultivate a relationship with yourself so that you're authentically you and not having to lie, basically. Happiness is an inside job. Yes, I love GP Matt. I love that you guys put these little quotes. You're like, Natalie, let's just sum it up to something very simple. <laughs> it is, but it's not, right? We say it in beautiful words. Happiness is an inside job. It sounds so beautiful. Oh, love it. It is. Now go practice it and see if you're happy when somebody cuts you off in traffic or almost hits you, or swerving all over the road because they're looking at their phone instead of driving. And it entices anxiety. Now switch that to happiness inside. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's hard to tell you, especially with your partner. Ah, that's why I lie. Okay. Well, um, you probably have a partner who doesn't accept you for you. And so then you're probably with a person that doesn't accept you in the first place. If you can't tell your, be honest with your partner, um, probably with a person who is trying to change you. See? I'm authentically me. People know who I am. I, there are no tricks. Okay? You either like me or you don't. And I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you. I think I've told you guys that several times. I'm not going to convince people to like me. You either like me or you don't like me. And it's okay either way. Whatever. If you don't like me, it's okay. 
I still love you. I still find your there's value in you. But we've got to let go of that. Nobody is liked by everybody. This is not possible. Like we can go through lists of people, right? We can talk about these, even these stars and blah, blah, blah. And there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be people who don't like you. You just got to find the ones that love you for who you are. And we as a society don't know how to do that. We try to fit into, you know, the mold so people can like us. Again, expanding consciousness and understanding where that's emanating from. Okay. So kind of went a little bit off topic from correspondence, but that's okay. Haters going to be hate. That's right. They are. I have haters. I've had haters show up left and right. Trust me. <laughs> haters going to hate, but if you love yourself, then does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, I think Linga left. He was like, I'm tired. Not only it's too late. Okay. So again, we're going to keep continuing over the correspondence and what it means. And thank you guys for continuing along the journey because this book is really important. I um, um, highly encourage that you get it and perhaps read it. Of course, I'll keep reading. It's going to take forever to get through because, you know, me, I have to stop and talk and I get through five sentences and then there I go on a tangent. Um, but again, I like how it says as above, so low. And once we once we can comprehend um, and access the levels from which they emanate, then we can start to mold and work with the one thing. Um, um, let's see. Actually, this is a concise statement of the concept of archetypes, um, which is a primordial idea or the independent forces that impose pre-existing patterns of organization on the various levels of manifest reality, which we talked about before. So basically, archetypal patterns um, exist in sort of this stew of of energy that kind of just kind of exists within us at certain times right um the fact that everywhere throughout the various levels of existence there are vertical lines with universal prototypes wrote on the alchemic philosopher means that the cosmology cosmological view of nature and also every art based on it possesses a hierarchically arranged multiplicity of meanings in other words, it has various meanings and various ways to understand it, which is why we have so many different ways of perceiving the world and everybody sees things very differently because there are infinite ways to look at um, this particular archetypal patterning. And we do see that in mythology that the storylines do change based on what we're going through, um, perhaps in our own personal life and situations. Okay. So that was a whole mouthful and hopefully you got what I was saying. I'm pretty sure you guys did. Um, but the archetypal patterning that we see emanating through individuals does play out a little bit differently based on the characters that are, you know, in our sort of kind of like constructed around us, the characters that we play this life out with. And so we can understand that. And if we understand that, and this takes, again, us so sort of unbinding the ego and, 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 and looking at the ego as a function, a healthy function, a way to operate healthy by looking at the different energies that exist within us. In other words, there are different energies that emanate through us, and we need to understand that. And that's basically what it's saying. Where does it emanate from? Well, we can go into the unconscious and understand that the unconscious holds all and nothing. It holds everything and nothing. Which, you know, everybody says, well, how do we get to that point? That's a paradox. Well, could be. It is. And it's hard to explain. But there, I have a picture and a visual in order to explain and describe that. And we'll perhaps we'll go over that later. Okay. So, we talk about the multiple meanings that are reflected in each line and the correspondence puts forth um, the the tablet really says as above so below as above so below and that's i mean that's really it that's the law the doctrine of correspondence but of course um to understand it at a deeper level um we have we get to look at our own lives and how it has meaning for us in our life. 
again, we can assess the results because I talked about intention and attention, which we do find in mindfulness meditation. You know, they've talked about it over and over. Or we talk Eckhart Tolle, who talks about the power of now and understanding that if we exist in the now, we sort of cultivate that connection to our, I don't want to say higher self, but our greater self, our greater understanding. And, and it does actually change the dynamics of our brain when we start to do this. So we literally are perceiving life from a different lens when we do this because our brain changes. And as the brain changes, the way that we see the world changes. And the way that we see the world changes, we start to operate and maneuver through the world differently. Okay. And you could see this in thoughts, right? Because they talk about this from the ancient traditions about how thoughts shape the world. Our thoughts, where the mind goes and where we focus is what's going to be created. So where your mind goes is where your focus is and where your focus is is what you create in the world. To be aware of that. Hard, right? Not easy. Practice. The mind is a muscle, needs to be worked out. Yes, and reading is one, but also practicing um, observing the observer. Who is the observer observing the observer? Right? And we go into these really big, deep rabbit holes of like, what? But we can't transcend these and we can't understand how to transcend it until we start to do that. And we start to look at it. And we start to engage with it. Then we can start to mold it. Right? And our brain. Yes, needs to be worked out. And there's different ways of working the brain. Okay, so that was a lot. And this again went on for an hour. I don't know how I keep doing an hour. I was like 30 minutes before, but you know, I guess I have a lot to say these days. Um, lots of stories. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna continue on um tomorrow and uh we're still on that and then once we're done with this particular passage then it'll be the revelation of hermes um and breaking away from the material reality and traveling along the hidden cosmic axis the divine uh pymander mind of the sovereignty okay which i think of baram would like that right the mind of the sovereign how do we become the mind of the sovereign so again, language has created all these constructs, and we start to see that as we read alchemy. We're like, oh, that's where they got that from. Mm -hmm. That's how they created that law or that whatever. So the mind of the sovereign, um, perhaps being part of the way that you construct the new world, right? So there you have it. Um, have a wonderful day. Um, Tuesday so I will be seeing you guys on tomorrow and thank you for hanging in there and thank you for staying throughout and I love you guys so 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 much and of course we will be seeing you tomorrow Mwah! bye bye